Hi everyone, this is Abdul from Pythonist. I hope you are doing well. You have learned what is Flask, how to create and run a basic Flask application, and we talked about request response cycle in Flask. So at this stage, we are ready to build a fully functional REST API. So let's get started. First, we will understand what a REST API is. Then we will talk about what is JSON and why it's important to understand this. Then finally, we will create an API for books library where we can add a new book, get a single book or a list of all books, update an existing book record and delete a book. We will integrate the database to this API in a step-by-step -step manner. So at the first place, we will use an in-memory list of books objects and perform CRUD operations. Then we will utilize SQLite database. And after that, we will integrate an online MySQL database. Great, so let's start this journey by getting yourself introduced with what is REST. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, an almost meaningless description of the most used web service technology. REST is a way for two computer systems to communicate over HTTP in a similar way to web browsers and servers. REST was defined in 2000 by Roy Fielding and is considerably simpler. It's not a standard by a set of recommendations and constraints for RESTful web services. It includes several constraints like client server. System A makes an HTTP request to a URL hosted by system B, which returns a response. The next one is REST is stateless. The client request should contain all the information necessary to respond to a request. Another one is cacheable. A response should be defined as cacheable or not. And the last one is layered. The requesting client need not know whether it's communicating with the actual server, a proxy, or any other intermediary. And here are some of the important terminologies we should understand before proceeding further. The first one is endpoint or resource. Endpoint is a URL with a domain, port, path, and RQRE string. The second one is HTTP methods. It includes get to get data as response, post to create a new record, put to update a record, and delete to remove a record. These methods can also be represented as CRUD, which stands for create, post, read and get, update and delete. The third one is HTTP headers. Information such as authentication tokens or cookies can be contained in the HTTP request header. So with these properties, a web service can be called a REST service. Now let's move to what is JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, which is a lightweight data interchange format. JSON is a text format that is completely language independent. It can easily be sent to and from a server and used as data format by any programming language. Here's an example of a simple JSON object. Here you can see we have key value pairs. It can be nested and also in the form of an array to present multiple nested objects. Awesome. Let's start building our API. So in our previous videos, we have created a virtual environment named myenv and installed Flask. Inside VL Studio Code, I will create a new file named app.py. First, we will create a simple API by using an in-memory list of books. Then we will move to integrate a different database. Okay, inside my app.py, I will import Flask, Request, and JSONify from Flask. Flask will provide us the application instance. Request will allow to add methods to routes, and JSONify will encode Python dictionaries into JSON strings. Then I will create an application instance as app equal to flask and pass the dunder name argument. Great. So now I have a list of books. Let me paste it here. You can see we have a list of books objects and each object has an ID, author, language and title attribute. So let's write a route to get all the books and post a new book. So I will say at app.route and add the URL as slash books. Then we have to mention the methods we want to allow for this URL. So I will add get to get all the books and post to create a new book. Now we can bind a view function to this route. So I will define this function as books 
and inside that we will check if the method of request is get we will simply encode the list of books into json and return it as a response and if the request method is post we have to create a new book object and add to the list so first we have to grab the values coming with the request and generate a new id which is simply the next digit of the previous one then i will create an object with these values and append to the list and finally we can simply return that list after encoding it to json great let's first test both of these operations get the list of all books and create a new then we will move further but keep in mind that we are using an in-memory list to store our books which allow the post data only on runtime i will show what i mean during the testing so as you know to run this app we need to define the main section and call the app.run method as you can see here now if we run python app.py our api is available at localhost colon 5000 great now we are inside the postman to test our api this is a brilliant tool for apis testing you can use it as an extension of your browser or as a standalone application so i will select the get method and pass the url as localhost colon 5000 slash books so you can see here's the list of all books great now let's try to create a new book so first i have to change the method from get to post then we definitely have to pass the values for new book we can pass these values here inside the body just select the form data and pass new values against the keys we don't need to pass an id because we are generating the id inside our view function so if we submit this request it will add this new book to the list of books great but if we take a look at our list inside app.py this new book is not available here that's what i was talking about because we are using in memory list which can be added a new item only for runtime we will use databases for data persistency in our upcoming videos great now let's move towards other operations i will define another route as app.route and pass the url as slash book slash then i have to pass an argument named id which will be the type of integer because we need to perform operations on a single object by passing its id so definitely we have to mention this thing inside of a route then i will add the methods as get to get a single book by its id put to update an existing book and delete to remove a book then we have to pass this id to our view function and inside the view function i will perform operations based on the request method if it is get we will iterate through the list and return the book where our id will match then for the put request we have to find the book first by iterating the list and then we have to update the values for that particular book and after that we can return this updated book object great now finally for the delete method once again we will find that particular object by using its id and then we will pop that book from the list after that i will return the updated list of books great now let's test these operations also so i will change the method to get once again and also we need the url as slash book then i will pass an id as zero for example and if we submit this request it will return that particular book now if i change the method to put and pass new values for this book and submit the request you can see the values are updated and finally to test the delete operation i will simply change the method to delete and submit the request it will return the updated list and you can notice that the book with id 0 is not existed anymore great so that's how can perform the crud operations using flask in our next video we will integrate the sqlite database and perform these operations to that database so stay tuned and if you like the content of this video thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future thanks for watching